Jeffrey watches self-improvement videos for hours a day. You'd think that someone who constantly listens to advice on how to fix his life would have eventually fixed his life. But he's not taking any action, all this content consumption, and he's not changing anything. Adonis! Adonis looks over to young Jeffrey and instantly recognizes the issue. This is not young Jeffrey's fault. Adonis reminisces on his earlier stages of self-improvement. He used to be just like Jeffrey, wasting his time on games and eating food that he shouldn't have. But Adonis realized that these habits would destroy him and he took action. He started going to the gym, eating clean, training his mind and his body and becoming a better man. I honestly think that you're in the worst position to be in because before you heard about self-improvement and you were watching videos like this, you had this level of ignorance with your bad habits, didn't you? You kind of knew that they were bad, but you didn't really think about them day to day. You were just like your friends who just go and play video games and don't really think about the consequences. But then you became aware of how negative that would be for the long term if you kept up those bad habits of playing video games, watching porn, junk food, Netflix, all this like stuff that you know is just kind of pleasure and fun right now, but it makes your life worse in the long run, especially if you get addicted to those things. Previously, you didn't really realize how bad these things were so you could enjoy them. Now you're probably finding that you still do some of these bad habits, but you can't even enjoy them fully because that thought is always in your mind of the consequences of your actions, isn't it? And this, honestly, this messed me up. When I think about this period of my life that I'm about to tell you, like I can't even help to begin to almost feel like tears in my eyes when I think about the period of my life of like early 20s. 2020 at the start of the COVID lockdown because for all of my life before that moment I did a bunch of bad habits but I wasn't really clued up on what the negative consequences were you know I was just like a young guy playing video games maybe drinking maybe partying maybe you know just messing around wasting time scrolling on my phone porn video games you know all this stuff it was just kind of like yeah that's you know what I do that's what everyone does right but early 2020 was the first time that I actually started to watch some self-improvement content and it plagued me with awareness it made me aware just how bad I was treating myself but it also gave me hope for a better life. I remember around that point, the OGs of self-improvement will know this, around that point is when dopamine detoxing first took off and a bunch of the big self-improvement YouTubers at the time made a couple of videos on them and they got really, really viral and everyone started to look into dopamine detoxing, how to do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it, how to train your brain into liking hard things. This niche took off and I remember I desperately needed to learn the knowledge for this. I was literally waking up smoking weed all day and I remember watching these videos of people saying, yeah, you know, like you've got to control your dopamine you've got to be able to like you know cut out these bad habits and i swear i'm watching these videos with weed ash all around my computer probably after watching it, i'm just gonna go back to playing games i've got some like cheesecake or something being delivered on uber eats right now and day in day out i had this thought that i needed to change but i just kept on finding myself going back to the same bad habits i didn't want to do those anymore but it was just who i was it was just the thing that i was you know supposed to do you know i wake up and yeah like you know i'm not supposed to smoke you know smoke Smoking's like bad dopamine. I don't want to smoke weed anymore. No, no. And it almost feels like a full-time job. You probably know this, don't you? Like if you're trying to quit a bad habit, like one that's actually quite like nice for you that you really like, it feels like a full-time job, doesn't it? It feels like you have to think about it literally like 24 seven. It's like mentally draining to not do it, isn't it? And it gives you like this sense of nervousness of like, okay, I I am I going to relapse today? Oh no, I really hope I don't relapse today. I really hope, no, no, I'm not going to watch porn today. I'm not going to play video games today. Oh man, no, no, no. I really feel like, no, 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 don't, no, 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 no. Cause I'm on day three and then, you just can't help but to like just go a bit unconscious and just move your finger over or you know like scroll on your phone down to reddit or something or to like move your cursor over to the video game that you want to play it feels like it's unnatural doesn't it it's the natural thing to keep doing those bad habits and that's like the normal thing right imagine if you were just unconscious all day but still you know able to move around you would naturally just go and do that bad habit wouldn't you it's somewhat unnatural to not do those things that we've been doing for so long and for a lot of guys this is video games right you know i'm going to tell you something you might not have known about me. I used to do one-to-one -one self improvement coaching. It was like the first part of like the business that I did on YouTube where people would pay me to hop onto a video call with them and I'd listen to their problems and I'd try and give them some advice. I don't do this anymore. I don't really have anything to sell you. But I used to do this when we just had like, you know, a thousand, two thousand subscribers. And very interestingly, there was an older gentleman who actually bought my package. He was like 45 years old and he wanted help to lose weight. So he said in his words, he used to be like fit and young like me. But then as the years went on, he packed on like the pounds, he's married and stuff. 
stuff and he just stopped like exercising as much. And he was a really nice guy. Like he was very like supportive. He'd give me a bunch of like compliments on the work that I was doing. And he said it was very important. We started to talk about his eating habits. What we're talking about here with his story will be relatable to you. Even if the thing that you want to improve on is video games, for example. So I'm asking him, you know, what kind of things do you eat? What do you do? Which is causing like this fat gain. So he was very overweight. And you know, he started telling me his diet. So, you know, in the morning he'll be kind of nice. He'll eat the right things. But slowly as the hours go by, he'd just get intense cravings out of nowhere. He'd maybe get a feeling of loneliness or feeling a little bit depressed. And this is, you know, whilst he lives with his wife, he truly did love his wife. Their relationship seemed to be good with me, but he had a feeling of loneliness and, you know, some like internal psychological negativity throughout the day. And that would then cause him to almost seek comfort in his diet. And then he'd binge eat thousands and thousands of calories. And then I asked him what he had done so far, which is a really good question to ask. If you're ever trying to help someone, if I can give you a very quick tip before we get to the rest of the video, always just ask lots and lots of questions. You should barely do any of the talking. If you're trying to help a friend or help anyone who needs your help, literally just ask as many questions as possible and let them do quite literally 95% of the talking. Because if you really want to help them, you want them to think of the idea themselves and you just kind of lead them to it. It's the best way to help someone. I learned this over like a bunch of reading and everything. So then I asked him another question. I said, okay, what have you done so far to try and improve this? And he says, you know, like I've, I've tried to like sign up for the gym and maybe I go twice, but then I just kind of don't do it. And with my diet, I've tried to, you know, improve my diet and eat cleaner, but it just feels unnatural. And then I knew exactly what to help him with. I would have been really cool if I had this object, but I told him to imagine a rubber band. So if you imagine this right now, imagine a rubber band. If we pull one side of this rubber band, this is what you've been doing to try and stop your bad habits. This pull here, you've been doing the real world activities. To quit watching porn, you've downloaded the porn blocker. To quit playing video games, you've uninstalled the video game habit. To quit eating junk food and to lose some weight, you've went to the gym and you've, you know, tried to throw away the junk food. And you've done this thing, right? So you've pulled the rubber band up this way. You have done the things of the real world. But guess what? Eventually, the rubber band snaps and goes back to its starting point. You can't hold this tension forever. This is tension. This is unnatural. This is what we've been doing all this time. It feels unnatural. It feels like we have to pull it this way and there's always tension to snap back to this starting point. Another analogy I gave to the same gentleman was that he was swimming upstream. So, you know, like in a river or whatever, like he's going upstream and it's harder because the water's hitting his face and pushing him back upstream, upstream. And yeah, you can make some progress, but eventually you get tired and you're going to go back down to the natural flow of the stream. So, I said to him, we need to flip this around. We need to change the direction of the stream entirely. We need to not move this side of the rubber band, the, the real world activities that we focus on all this time, those website blockers, this idea of, yeah, I'm just not gonna buy the junk food today. We don't need to move this because we've tried this so many times. Bro, how many times? We don't have studies for this, but you know that this is true, right? Haven't most people wanted to like lose weight? Haven't most people wanted to go on like a fat loss journey, especially in the new years? And haven't most people wanted to get fit and go to the gym? And every, most of them, 90% of people literally never make significant progress in their fitness journey. They go right back to this starting point. That stream pushing them all the way back. So the answer is clear when it's explained like this. We need to change, not this side of the rubber band, but this, this starting point. We don't need to tell someone, here's how to swim upstream even faster because that can be nice and they can make a little bit more progress, but eventually the stream will push them back down. We need to move the entire stream and change its direction. How can we do that? How can we change your starting point? How can we change which way the river flows? Well, it's not in the physical world around us. It's mental. And once you understand this, you might be a little bit shocked of how easy and fast it was. What we need to do is change your starting point. You know what the issue was for this gentleman? His starting point was, in his words, a fat man. That is how he talked about himself. That's how he saw himself as a fat man. I'm quoting this. I'm not being insulting. This is what he used to call himself. A fat man goes on a run, does some dieting. You know, he tries to make a little bit of progress. He eats an apple today, but then it snaps back because he's still a fat man at the end of the day. It's this that we have to change. This is your identity, your self image. This video would get so many more views if I just linked you like some website blockers and I said, oh, if you just wanna block like a website, then you can go click on this and uh, download this Chrome extension. And that'd really help guys. But if it was that simple, everyone would have one and everyone would literally be successful in never watching porn again, wouldn't they? But it's not that simple because that's not the issue. There's 
tons of people out there who don't have porn blockers or, you know, website video game blockers or anything installed in their computers and they never watch that stuff anyway. There's a lot of people out there who go into a supermarket, walk past the snack aisle and it does nothing to them. I'm one of those people now. And I don't say that's a, like, you know what? I do kind of say that's a boast. It's one of like my greatest achievements has been able to control my diet. And I'm finally one of like the people, like I could have my favorite snack in front of me and it doesn't really do anything for me. If I've planned it into my diet and it's, you know, it's like a nice little break because I've been really good on my diet recently and it's a piece of chocolate or cake or something. Okay, fair enough. You know, it's in my fitness pal, fair enough. I've become one of those people and I can't even tell you how proud I am for myself. The reason why I think I was able to help this guy is because even though I was a lot younger, certainly I'm not, you know, some professional. I'm really not, okay? I had my own real life journey with binge eating and binge eating, a lot of people don't really know. It's not simply that you just ate, you know, a lot. Oh yeah, I just, I ate so much cake yesterday. No, no, no. Binge eating is almost like a psychological disorder of how you eat and it's that you eat for comfort. Eating can be comfortable for most people, but when you specifically eat for comfort and you've experienced a lot of childhood trauma, childhood abuse like I did, suddenly eating becomes a crutch and you start to eat around the day because it gives you this weird feeling. This can get a little bit deep and I, you know it's not so much about this video, but if you do want to know something about me, like I used to have this kind of eating disorder where eating would give me a feeling of physical safety away from the abuse that I was experiencing at home. Another guy that I coached told me once, he was very overweight as well. And he told me once that he eats till he literally feels sick. He feels so physically disgusting that it feels like he's safer from anyone's attention. And that's kind of how I would have related to it. I would eat so much till the point my stomach really hurts. And then I just keep taking small bites and just keep taking more and more and more. Why? Eating gives you a sense of comfort. And when you live in a like PVP enabled zone, like I did, and I was getting beaten every couple of days, every week or so, I was getting threatened of violence, of abandonment. It's the only comfort that I had. Well, that and video games. And so I binge ate most days for years and years and years. I was just lucky that I was able to like control the weight in some sense. Maybe it's metal, I don't know what it is, metabolism or something. So I was never like fat, fat. But I certainly did like, you know, get to like 20% body fat, which is unnatural for me because I'm quite a skinny guy naturally. I got to like 22% body fat at one point in like 2018, 2019. Every day binge eating. Eventually that turns into binge drinking. And I started to drink half a liter of vodka before going on a night out. A lot of alcohol. And then I discovered weed. And then I started to almost not really binge smoke. I never smoked like a much volume of weed. But I smoked every single day, all day, which was a problem. I think I would have smoked more if I could have afforded more, but I just couldn't. So I was like this for years and years and years. This was my my major bad habit. I was just a binge. I was a binge eater, binge smoker, binge drinker. And when I did play video games, when I became an adult and, you know, I had my own laptop away from the family home and I could play as much as I wanted, I was a binge gamer. It's not exaggeration when I tell you that sometimes I'd play RuneScape 12, 14 hours a day whilst I was in university and I should have been focusing on other things. I remember even being in my part-time job in university. I had this part-time job when I was a receptionist and RuneScape for the mobile just got released. And so I literally used to just play RuneScape on my shift whilst I was in work. Which, you know, to me, it sounds like a genius idea. Like, yeah, you know, I'm getting paid to play RuneScape. Yeah, it sounds awesome, doesn't it? But like when you realize that, yeah, then your work performance is going to be reduced. I lived like this for a very long time. And then since May 2020, I've never binge drank again, never binge gamed again. Do you know how I did that? Because all this time I tried to solve these problems. There was a time when I threw away like all of my like weed related stuff. There was a time when, you know, I stopped like drinking as much and yeah, I'm not going out anymore, guys. There's a time when like, you know, I got annoyed and like threw up like a bunch of the boxes of like cakes and stuff into the bin. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not gonna eat this stuff anymore. And then I'd go back and eat it more. Because in May 2020, I discovered something that changed my life and it was mental health concept of improving your mind. You know, I'd always heard about mental health before this because more and more people used to talk about it back then, especially about guys of like, you know, like you guys should like talk about your feelings and you should open up and you should, you know, improve your mental health. And eventually I realized, oh yeah, like my mental health is really bad. I took a mental health test that was like some free one online on Google. You literally just search like NHS mood assessment. And it was just like this free one that I talk into, it's like five minutes. And it just gave me a ranking for depression and anxiety. And my scores were really high, especially the anxiety one was very very, very high. I don't know, remember exactly when it was, but I realized that most of my eating and behavioral problems came down to anxiety. It came down 
to a little bit of like the depression symptoms that I had. Because when you feel anxious in your mind, when you have like these mental problems, of course you're gonna be more likely to want to seek comfort in porn. Do you know, if you're having like negative thoughts, of course you're gonna wanna go and play some more video games because that's probably like the best thing in your life. That's probably the most stimulating, most distracting thing that you can do, which saves you from the harsh realities of the real world. And sometimes when you do pick up the confidence to penetrate the real world and you know say that, yeah, I'm gonna lose some weight, I'm gonna stop playing video games. You do make some progress, but you snap back because we will always go back to our baseline, our identity, our self-image, our mental health. So remember before we were speaking about the dopamine detox when people started to talk about it and it got really popular. Around May 2020, I realized that I was gonna be one of the most extreme guys of the dopamine detox niche online. If you're an absolute OG of this channel, you know that this channel actually, when it was like 500 subs, one 2K subs, it was actually mostly about dopamine detoxing. So you know what I did? I set this goal to grow this YouTube channel. It had 50 subscribers at the time. And I started to see myself as that disciplined guy who was on the dopamine detox. I started to see how I would appear in the eyes of other people. And usually people say this is a bad thing. Usually people say like, oh, you know, don't, don't care what anyone else thinks. But for me personally, it genuinely saved my life. I started to see myself as that disciplined dopamine detox guy that I could like, you know, picture someone clicking onto YouTube and seeing my videos that I, you can go and look if they're still all there, seeing the videos I made two and a half years ago in May, 2020, where I'm talking about like, I've been on a dopamine detox for six weeks. At the time, every single YouTuber who was talking about dopamine detoxing was talking about it in this clickbait way of like, yeah, just here's how to reset your mind in 24 hours. Here's how to change your life in 24 hours. I saw that and I was like, okay, these guys are literally just scamming everyone who's watching. You can't change your life in 24 hours, it's BS. You can't, like, cure your brain in 24 hours. And I said, okay, I know for a fact what you can do to save your life. And it's to get onto a dopamine detox, but not for 24 hours, not for a week, but just try and say, okay, well, this is my new life now. I started to see myself as a military style disciplined guy. And so I wrote down a timetable, my old like May 2020 timetable, where I'd wake up at 6 a.m. every single day. And I just go out on a run and I go use the gymnastic rings when all the gyms were closed and I go work out in nature. And then I'd come home and do like six hours of work when I wasn't even used to doing literally one hour of work without distracting myself and I'd eat totally clean and I'd meditate and journal. And you know, I started to see all these things in my mind and almost get this sense of pride for the potential that I had. I started to change who I was. I started to change how I saw myself. I was no longer this stoner pothead. I was no longer this guy who drinks half a liter of vodka on a night out trying to sleep with a five out of 10 girl who's also semi-drunk so that we can both like have like 10 minutes of like pleasure together. I started to see myself as a military style disciplined guy on a dopamine detox that other people were beginning to notice like, man, this guy's actually been around and he's been putting in the work. It's not that I did those things and then I started to, you know, feel like I was that person. I started to see myself as that person first and then I started to do those things. Do you understand? I didn't move the rubber band this way. I moved it this way. It was my identity, my self-image, how I saw myself that changed everything for me. Like I said before, this video would be so much more enjoyable and just easier for you to watch and it'd get way more views if I just told you, yeah, you know, install these website blockers and you're all done. Here you go, top five ways to cure bad. This isn't like a clickbait thing that I'm talking about. It kind of messes with your mind to understand. That's why I'm trying to really explain how this works. You must change your identity. So right here, right now, I want you to ask yourself a question in your mind. You can just close your eyes and let this video play for a second. How do I see myself? What kind of person am I? Say that question in your mind right now. What kind of person am I? How do I see myself? Who am I? And don't big this up. You know, you've just watched me kind of like rant with a bit of confidence. Don't say, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a really sick guy. Genuinely, genuinely think about your habits, especially the bad ones. Think about them. Think about what you want to improve on. And then truly see like a summary of who you are in your mind. A realistic summary. Chances are, if you are watching videos like this, this identity of yourself that you're thinking of right now, this summary that you've just built up, this, you know, like flashes of your habits that you've just built up, chances are it's going to be kind of negative. Do you know, if you're, you were an amazing positive guy, then, you know, you probably wouldn't need to watch a video about how to cure bad habits, would you? So it's probably going to be kind of a negative perception of yourself. You might see yourself as somewhat of a loser, certainly not a winner. You might see yourself as the kind of guy who's been struggling to get girls, who feels a little bit lonely, the kind of guy who's maybe a little bit addicted to video games and junk food and you know all these things. You know what's interesting? We've never considered this and it seems crazy to think this and hopefully you can just understand what I'm about to say. You may be addicted to video games, not because you know you've been playing them for so long so now you just built up an addiction of them, but maybe because you see yourself as a gamer. Does that make sense? It may not have been 
our actions that actually caused us to get here. It may actually have been our identity, our self-image that caused us to get here. There's a slight difference. Most people think that all you need to do is just take action, don't they? That, yep, just take action, just take action. But a guy who sees himself as a fat man who takes action, okay, he'll take action for a week and he'll lose one pound of fat, but he was 270 pounds before. He's 269 pounds. He doesn't look any different. He doesn't even feel any different. Difference. He still sees himself as a fat man. And so what is a guy who genuinely believes that he is a fat man going to eventually do, which aligns with his personality and his perception of himself? Well, he's going to go reach for that junk food within a week, isn't he? He's not going to be able to stay on to the good habits he's doing. But what if this same guy who considers himself to be a fat man closed his eyes every single day for five minutes and started to see his body transform and his athleticism improve to the point that he no longer saw himself as a fat man, but rather an athletes. And what if this same guy started to say to himself, even at 270 pounds, even at 30% body fat, he started to say in his mind, I am an athlete. I am an athlete. I am an athlete. What if he started to surround himself with athletes? What if he started to consume the content of athletes and be like, yep, I'm just like this guy. So this athlete, he wakes up and he has a protein shake every day. Okay, I'm going to wake up and have a protein shake every day because that's what athletes do. I'm an athlete now. So athletes have protein. Okay, so what if he started to do the identity shift first? in almost like a delusionary way, in almost like, you know, a silly way. He's 270 pounds, he's fat. He genuinely, objectively is fat. But if he started to just see himself as an athlete, he would probably make more progress than he's ever done before. And what about you? What if in a silly way, just like this guy, what if you close your eyes and every single day take five minutes to start to see yourself as a Chad, as one of those guys that actually gets the attraction of girls? What if you genuinely start to believe that you are that kind of guy and you start to form this very strong belief like, yep, yes I am. I'm a Chad, I'm a Chad, I'm a Chad. I'm the guy who gets a lot of girls. A lot of girls are attracted to me. Of course they are. And you start watching some YouTube videos of some guys who look like Chads and you see how they dress and how they talk to girls. You start following me. If you've got Instagram, you start following like some guys who look like like Chad's and you know, you see like they've got girls subtly in the pictures, you know, okay, this is the kind of caption that a Chad puts onto his picture. And this is, sounds cringe, obviously, but just what if you just did this? You don't have to tell anyone that you're trying to become a Chad. You don't have to, you know, publicize this. But what if you just did this? What if you stopped seeing yourself as the loser who struggles to get girls and instead you just started to pretend five, 10 minutes a day, you'd close your eyes and just started to think, yep, I am a Chad. Yeah, you, that girl who I've got a crush on, no, no, she's got a crush on me. She's just really nervous. What if you started to think for yourself? What if you started to actually think positive thoughts? Because I can tell you from experience, that's one of the strongest things you can ever do in your life. You know what I just said specifically? Like, imagine that girl that you've got a crush on. Destroy this thought in your mind that, yeah, I've got a crush on her and she's, no, no, no. Change that thought to, yeah, she has a crush on me, but she's just nervous. And I promise you right now, that's one of the best pieces of dating advice you'll ever get in your entire life. If you plant that thought in your mind, no matter how silly it is, even if you're unattractive, you are slightly more likely to attract her because you have the right belief set. Now, you probably have a lot of work to do. This isn't to say, you know, Oh yeah, just, you know, think that you're a six foot seven muscular guy and it's suddenly going to work. Of course not. But your beliefs, your identity, your self image leads to the consistent long-term action that causes you to be there. I, at age 17, 18, 19, saw myself as a leader. I started to see myself as like a guy who had elevated his status in the social hierarchy. And so I started to put the work in for that. And you know, it wasn't amazing, but it started to come true. Age 19, when I first started to actually date girls, I started to see myself as like one of these chads that has multiple girls for him. And then I started to act like it. And I started to go to the gym and become a little bit more attractive and take better pictures for Tinder and Instagram. And it started to become true. I didn't suddenly just become like a 10 out of 10. You know, my eyelid shape didn't change so I had like hunter eyes or anything. No, none of that changed. Interestingly, the results that I had in life started to change because I started to believe I was that guy. There's a mystery to all this. And this line of thinking for me has come from the book Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. I've done a video of it on my channel, which you can go and find if you click on this link right now. I think it's one of the most important books that you may ever read. You've been pulling this side of the rubber band for so long and you know so many other people who just keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling and then snap back to normal. Okay, let's try again. You know, another kind of diet. Maybe keto or carnival will work for me. Oh, snap. Okay, this year we're really going to get serious. I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to lose 17 pounds this month. Snap. Change this.
change your self-image. And the two ways to do that is through visualizations and affirmations. Close your eyes and just keep saying that you are this person that you want to be. I close my eyes now and I will say to myself, I am a fighter. I'm excellent at fighting. I'm so good at fighting. I'm so disciplined that I go to multiple MMA sessions per day. I had my first amateur fight and I walloped the guy. And none of that's even true. Literally, I've not even had my first amateur fight. But what if I just start to imagine? What if I just create like a mental movie of myself? I'm in the ring right now. The stadium is packed. Everyone's watching. Sam's by my corner. Everyone's taking pictures. There's flashes of cameras. My girl is there staring and I'm, you know, I can't get beaten up in front of her. The guy's right in front of me. I just notice that every time he goes for a jab, he pulls his arm back a little bit too slow. Oh, he's done it again. If he does it one more time, oh, he's about to jab again. He throws the jab and I already know what to do. I'm gonna smack him hard with my right elbow. He drops to the floor. In first person view, I am in the middle of the ring. Everyone's going crazy, whoa, you know, a bunch of my fans are here. We're all watching Hamza's first fight. And it feels good to be a winner. I feel the feeling of what it would be like if I was there right now having accomplished this. And every time you do one of these visualizations, even though it sounds silly, like I've just told you what mine is and it sounds kind of cringe, doesn't it? It absolutely does. So don't tell anyone that you're doing this because it sounds cringe and people will make fun of you. But the truth is it works. I wouldn't normally, you know, be around like someone I've just met and tell them, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm dreaming of being a fighter right now, but I'm just kind of telling you just so it's for your benefit. But you don't have to tell me when you're doing this. What if just five minutes every morning when you wake up, you think about the most ideal scenario for you, the grade that you want in school, the job promotion that you want, the success that you want in your business, the physique that you want, the lifestyle that you want, the women that you want. What if you see the moments of success, not the moments of desire, but the moments of success. You know, you don't pretend that, oh yeah, there's a girl and I've got a crush on her. No, no, you see that girl with a smile on her face handing you back your phone with her number in it. You see literally you getting this piece of paper that shows your grades and it's exactly what you wanted. You see that acceptance letter into the university that you wanted. Why don't you just go and enjoy that feeling of being a winner for five minutes a day and you will undeniably find that it will start to creep into your day-to-day -day life and you will just start to act and believe and think exactly like that guy. This is the greatest long-term strategy for destroying bad habits and power-leveling the good. Click and watch this video right now, do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.